Hello and welcome to another episode of Ground Truth. In this episode, we will continue our discussion of the artificial intelligence art models such as Dolly 2, Mid Journey, and Stable Diffusion. And we'll ask the question, are artificial intelligence models stealing from artists and programmers? As many of you may already know, the art that's being generated by these models is amazing. It's very cool. I know that many of you who are listening to this use these models uh, and you're writing prompts to create uh, really interesting art. The fly in the ointment is that none of this is probably legal. More than likely, what everyone is doing is participating in copyright infringement. So I knew from my research that Stable Diffusion was using something called the Lion 5B image data set, and hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, that data set has 5 billion images. I wasn't sure uh, how the Lion data set works, so I contacted the organizational lead, uh, Christoph Schumann, and he was kind enough to provide a thorough explanation, uh, which you can see on the screen. Okay, so how does this actually work? So Lion 5B doesn't actually provide the images because that would be a copyright violation. So I actually thought that they were just giving 5 billion images to all of these uh, AI companies. That's not the case. What they give them is a URL and the metadata. The AI companies such as OpenAI, Stability AI, and, all these, and a lot of other companies have to then go and download these images. So they're not committing any copyright infringement whatsoever. They're just, here are the URLs, and here's the metadata. The AI companies, they have to go and actually get these images, download these images from the Internet, and put them into their models. Now, here is a very interesting thing that Christoph said in his email. Quote, the act of generation or distribution later would then be a copyright violation, not the training. Okay, the fact that he's talking about copyright violation, that's a pretty big red flag if you're working on these models for commercial purposes. So let's just break it down what's happening here. They go and gather these 5 billion images without the permission, or at least in many cases without the permission of the artists, stick them into their models, and then that model synthesizes art using other artists and other programmers' copywritten material. Here's the problem with all that, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine if I wrote 10 books, and a group of AI programmers decided to go and just take my books without my permission and put them into a training data set, and then this AI engine started to spit out uh, new novels that were very similar to my novels. These novels had my writing style, characters that were very similar to my characters, and plots that were similar to my plots. And it was written in my voice. Now, would that be theft if they took copywritten material without the author's permission and put them in a data set? to spit out novels very similar to that author. So why, is any of, why does any of this even matter? The main reason is that these AI models are going to generate a lot of income. Let's remember that OpenAI received a $1 billion investment from Microsoft. Remember, they started off uh, with best intentions. Right? They were gonna be open, they were gonna be a nonprofit. And then they kind of switched gears and took this uh, private investment, became a private company. They're no longer a, a, a nonprofit. And then Microsoft paid them that money to get access to their model, which they then uh, released on GitHub as Copilot, which is provided to programmers for a fee. It's not given out for free. It's, it's provided for a fee. Now, what I'm going to argue is that what's happening with these models is copyright infringement. And further, I'm going to argue that these uh, artists and programmers should be compensated 
no different than a songwriter uh, who's compensated for a performance royalty when their music is played on the radio and a mechanical royalty uh, when it's uh, sold in a music store. In this case, we have art and programs that are being used to train models and mimic their style. And the only fair way to distribute the income is to track where the images and the programs came from. Or just like a radio station tracks which songs are being played. So what are the AI company's best defense? What, do you, what are they likely to argue in court? They're probably going to say that what their models are doing are no different than an artist who just looks at the art of other artists and then comes up with a new and original piece of art. But what's the, what's, what's the difference here? Well, the main difference is that a human artist is not making a digital copy of the work without the artist's permission. If they make a copy without compensating the artist, then that's a clear case of copyright infringement. A better example would be an artist who steals 100 images without the permission of the artist and then synthesizes those images into a new piece of art and sells it. Now, two things have happened in this example. Number one, the original theft of the image and then the sale of the synthesized image as an original piece of art. Synthesizing stolen art is not the same as creating an original piece of art. I'm going to say that one more time. Synthesizing stolen art and stolen programs is not the same as creating an original piece of art or an original program. You had to have the stolen art inserted into the AI diffusion models to generate the art. It's incapable of generating anything without billions of stolen images. So what are alternatives for these AI companies? Well, one path is for AI companies to limit their training data sets to open source images. This would remove the stigma of stealing from artists and programmers without their permission and profiting from their stolen work. However, those models will have a much smaller training data set and the results will be much lower quality images and programs. A much better path, in my opinion, would be to set up a system similar to ASCAP or BMI that represents uh, composers and songwriters, but in this case it would be for artists and computer programmers. This would incentivize artists and programmers to continue applying their trade uh, as they would generate income from these models. And the models would become better as more art and programs are available for their data sets. Or artists and programmers could designate that their art can be used uh, for these models and have a licensing fee similar to a stock photography. I know that some of the programs that are now being put on GitHub are making notations that you don't have our permission to use these for models. And that's going to, I think, become relevant later. Now, part of the problem is that there's a pretty big divide between the AI programmers that are eager to push the boundaries of artificial intelligence and copyright law. There's a huge void there. Nobody paid any attention to copyright law when they designed these models and just released them to the, to the public. And I think very little thought has been given to the rights of the artists and the programmers whose work is being used to push the state of the art of these AI models. And because these conversations never took place, what we have right now are giant AI piracy machines that are stealing from artists and programmers at an unprecedented scale. The worst part is that if action isn't taken soon, many of these artists and programmers are going to be put out of business by AI models using their stolen art and their stolen programs. The other serious problem is that companies like OpenAI and Stability AI are granting the copyright of the illegally generated images 
to the person who wrote the text prompt. Here is OpenAI's policy that is whimsically disconnected from the law. Basically, they're passing off stolen goods to prompt writers who are then told that it's their art. Now, why would they do that? Well, the reason is that nobody is going to pay money for art that they cannot use for their own purposes. Unfortunately, these text prompt writers are also going to have legal liability for theft. Now, the other line of defense for these AI companies is a fair use claim, which is located in Section 107 of the United States Copyright Act. And here it is for your viewing pleasure. Now, there's a couple of lines highlighted in yellow that are relevant to this discussion. Quote, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or is for a nonprofit educational purposes. Now the horse has already left the barn for open AI, stability AI, mid journey, Microsoft and others. The minute they started charging customers to use the AI models, it became a commercial use. Google on the other hand, still has a research or educational defense. And I think Google is aware of their legal liability, which is why they haven't released Imagine or Party AI models to the public. The other relevant section says, quote, the effect of the use upon the potential market for or value of the copyrighted work. Now we discussed this in the previous video on this topic. These AI models are commoditizing art down to as close to zero as possible, effectively putting artists out of work. And the same thing is happening or will happen to programmers. I mentioned previously that Microsoft released Copilot on GitHub, which is generating synthesized code built on the back of programmers that were never compensated. And they're selling this code for $10 a month or $100 per year. And none of that income is being shared with the programmers who made it possible. So where is this likely going to end up? In my opinion, I think there's going to be multiple class action lawsuits against OpenAI, Microsoft, MidJourney, Stability AI, and others. And it's possible during the due diligence phase, the names of everyone who generated stolen art or programs will be divulged and they could become co-defendants. But I think that's less likely because the corporations are going to have much deeper pockets. And I think there will eventually be a multi-billion dollar settlement. And in the future, AI models will be required to only use material in their training data sets that is licensed. And that's something that should have been done from the outset. I think it's pretty clear that these AI companies played fast and loose with the law. Now, hopefully you won't get the wrong idea. I love technology and I wanna see it flourish, uh, but a dystopian future uh, for these AI models is one where the government bans them due to copyright infringement. And that's another possibility. If these models are deemed to be theft, then these companies such as OpenAI, Stability AI, and others could be just shut down. These companies could be compared to Pirate's Bay and other online systems where copywritten material was swapped freely and they were shut down. Here we have the caveat that they're synthesizing stolen images and stolen programs, which will create a whole new line of copyright case law. Law students and law professors are gonna love this. Now, I hope it doesn't come to that and all the interested parties can reach a mutually beneficial solution that compensates artists and programmers for their work and makes these models available to all of us at a reasonable price. I'm curious to hear your thoughts.